Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. We're here today with our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday episode, where it's not just about losing weight, transforming your body, but it's actually getting healthy because it is my belief, whether you're trying to gain weight or lose weight, that it is an indication of your body not maintaining equilibrium or balance or homeostasis, all different ways of putting it. What I wanna share with you here today is one of the reasons why we're not able to get well, we're not able to regulate our mood, or our energy or even our sleep in that, and yes, I would say overall metabolism, is that we're not able to control our blood sugar levels. Now, for most people, that means elevated blood sugar. We know that it's a scary thought, but essentially we are moving to one out of every two people. Right now it's one out of every three people have type 2 diabetes in the Western-based world. Right now the United States, but that is moving, unfortunately, all over the world. When I was over in India, in uh, Beijing, do, studying uh, actually as an intern um, at a traditional Chinese medicine hospital, I got to see the very first generation. So this is in, um, well, this is back around 2010 or so that we saw the very first generation becoming overweight uh, and having all of this dysregulated blood sugar to a very high degree. And a lot of that correlates with the processed food and with sugary beverages. I mean, that's just one part of it. But what I want to do today, though, is really go well beyond that. So I, I think that most people by now, not everyone, but most people by now know that consuming a sugary beverage or processed carbohydrates... Um, are going to raise your blood sugar. All right, so what I want to do now is take the conversation to another level, to that next level. So once you understand that the energy drinks with sugar in them and the all the different sugary beverages and the you know straight processed carbs, it's going to spike your blood sugar. All right, so now let's say that you're, you're taking those out and you're still having difficulty regulating healthy blood sugar levels, right? When you're waking up, are your blood sugar levels below a 95, right? If you're, if you're using a glucometer, you're taking your glucose or you're using a continuous glucose monitor, and we'll link up some of our favorites here today at stephencabral.com forward slash 2581. We'll link up the three big takeaways from the show notes as well and any research you'd like to see too, that um, we know that your body's not burning body fat overnight. And from an energy perspective, as well as an overall health perspective, that's not ideal. So let's go through seven other reasons why, besides carbohydrates, right, besides diet, you have elevated blood sugar. The first one, which not a lot of people think about, is dehydration. Let's think about it this way. Your blood is predominantly water, at least the plasma. So if you have less water circulating through your body in the blood, you are then going to have, let's say, diluted blood levels, and therefore higher blood sugar, right? So if I were to add, think about this. I've got a coffee cup right here, right? My decaf coffee, nothing's left in it, but in, in this, this is about, let's say it's about 12 ounces, okay? So inside of this, if I pour out half of it and I were to add a sugar packet, it's going to be more sugary, right? Whereas if I had a full cup of coffee, and I would add a sugar packet, it would taste less sugary because there's more volume. So if your blood volume is decreased and you are dehydrated, meaning like there's less water in your body, the sugar matters more. So your body then is going to oftentimes, this is what happened to me when I had type 2 diabetes way back at 17 years old, no longer have it anymore, is that my body would continually, I would have to urinate. So I would have to urinate because that lowers your blood sugar, but I was also so thirsty. I would just take a 16 ounce glass of water. I can remember to this day, these red plastic cups that my mom had in our, in our house. And I would drink down it and then I would fill it right back up at our refrigerator and then I would drink another one right away and sometimes I would do a third. I would literally consume a liter to a liter and a half of water under a minute and my body was craving the water to lower blood sugar levels. We had no idea what was going on. My mom was horrified seeing me do this. Um, but unfortunately, there are other people in my family um, on my mom's side with diabetes. And so she had an inkling and that's why I got tested and I failed the glucose tolerance test. So dehydration is one of them. So make sure that you're getting about half your body weight in ounces of water and per day. And I can, I have a lot of podcasts on this. So I podcast on, you know, what counts as water, herbal tea is fine, your smoothies are fine, et cetera. All right, number two, what's the second reason that you might have elevated blood sugar beyond diet and carbohydrates? All right, so medications. Um, I can't give you all of them, right? Because the list is always changing, but birth control is potentially one of those. Uh, certain contraceptives in general, 
antidepressants, antipsychotic medication, some diuretics, and then also a big one is asthma-based medication, allergy-based medication, and nasal decongestants, many of which contain something called ephedrine or pseudoepinephrine or pseudoephedrine. And those things will raise fight or flight. So think about it. If fight or flight is elevated, we produce what? More cortisol. I want you to keep this in mind because many of these today have to do with elevated levels of a stress hormone called cortisol. So if our adrenal um, medulla is producing more of norepinephrine, an uh, uh, excitatory neurotransmitter or stress hormone, and our adrenal cortex is producing more of cortisol, a glucocorticoid, our body then, whether we eat carbohydrates or not, under stress, begins to break down stored glycogen, which is basically stored sugar in the liver or muscles, and it brings it into the bloodstream. That means we can artificially elevate our own blood sugar levels endogenously. That just means we do it inside of our body without external food coming in. And we now have high blood sugar levels. So that's really important because I'm going to name a couple others. I just want you to keep that in mind. Stress can raise blood sugar levels outside of diet. The third one is this. Poor sleep can cause elevated blood sugar levels overnight and into the morning. So sleep apnea is a big one. If you are losing consciousness or you are losing your breath, losing oxygen, and you're having apneas, well, that can be a big issue, right? It can actually cause what? More stress, more cortisol levels to increase. Another one is too much um, blue light before bed, right? Because that won't allow enough melatonin production and therefore too much cortisol. Uh, I would say one more, which would be eating too close to bed and then getting a blood, subsequent blood sugar drop. So a big meal right before bed and then get that drop in the middle of the night from the subsequent high and then the subsequent low of the blood sugar that could spike reactive hypoglycemia. So basically you go into low blood sugar and then your body's like, whoa, what's going on here? It produces a lot of cortisol and then the cortisol brings more sugar into your bloodstream. It can wake you up during the middle of the night as well. That's another reason for waking. And then just too little sleep. So basically less than seven hours, typically it's like around six hours or less, um, can, leave, can lead to, in those susceptible people, elevated AM glucose. All right, so that's going to not help with burning body fat overnight, right? When we should be burning lots of body fat over the 12 hours of fasting, essentially, overnight. The fourth one is the dawn phenomenon. I'm not going to go too deep on this, but I have a whole podcast on it. So we're going to link up that podcast at stephencabral.com forward slash 2581. If it ever isn't linked up or you can't find it, honestly, uh, just ask right at cabralsupportgroup.com. Just leave it just like, hey, where is the Cabral concept on the Dawn Phenomenon? And we will find it for you, all right? So the Dawn Phenomenon is the natural spike in hormones between, typically it's between like three and eight in the morning. First it's thyroid, and then it's cortisol typically. So thyroid kicks things off, then cortisol is what ends up waking us up out of our sleep because as cortisol begins to be produced somewhere between 6 and 8 a.m., melatonin levels start to fall and we wake up out of our slumber. That is the natural dawn phenomenon. But when you produce too much cortisol, well, it can lead to elevated glucose levels. Again, if you want to hear more on this, happy to share that with you. And I can actually test to see if this is happening to you. You can run something called the uh, Stress Mood and Metabolism Lab, and that will look at your thyroid, it'll look at your cortisol levels, and so much more. So that's um, at stephencabral.com forward slash labs, and just look at the Stress Mood and Metabolism. You can run it with our team, or of course, you can always run it with your doctor or integrative health practitioner level two as well. All right, the fifth one is too much caffeine. Now, why would too much caffeine cause elevated blood sugar levels? Here's the thing. Let's say you have a cup of coffee in the morning and it's just black. There's no carbs in it. There's nothing like that. And you say, I'm still in a fasted state. I would say, maybe, but let's hold on here. All right, let's hold on. Just because it's zero calories, what does your blood sugar look like 20, 30 minutes after that coffee? Because for some people, it spikes glucose levels because it increases epinephrine and cortisol, increasing glycogen breakdown, which then raises blood sugar. Doesn't happen to everybody, but I have given this presentation many, many times. No one used to talk about it, but now finally people are starting to talk more and more about it. It happens. How do you know if it's you? Simple glucometer you can use right at home. They cost like maybe $20. You can get them on Amazon. I'll link up uh, some of the ones that we've used in the past, or you can always find them at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. So you take your blood sugar uh, upon waking, and you can just take it or before your coffee, and then you can just take it 30 minutes after your coffee, 
See if your glucose levels are elevated. And if it's just a black coffee, zero calories shouldn't happen, right? Well, sometimes it does. So check that out. Number six is this. Female hormones. Now, uh, unfortunately, um, estrogen and progesterone can be affected to a greater degree during the luteal phase or more specifically the seven days or so uh, before a woman begins day one of menstruation. And when that happens, not for all women, but we've seen, especially more maybe the kapha body type or those more prone to diabetes, they can actually become less sensitive to insulin. So they're eating the normal diet that they may, but insulin no longer responds in the same way, which means that they have a little bit more elevated glucose than they typically would. It can cause a little bit of weight gain, uh, maybe a little bit more water retention, more inflammatory-based issues. Uh, and, and you know that's, that's exactly what we're talking about here today. Like what is going on beyond diet that could be causing these elevated blood sugar spikes? So um, best thing to do as well for this is that stress mood and metabolism test. Run it on days 19, 20, or 21 of your menstrual cycle um, if you have your period. And uh, that will let you know if you're at the proper estrogen to progesterone ratio. And it will look at your hemoglobin A1C and insulin as well. All right, And it will look at your cortisol levels, of course. The last one is this. And this is going to be a strange one for many, many people. But too high heat, think sauna, or too cold plunge, like a cold plunge, could spike blood sugar levels. And you might say, that, that sounds impossible. I'm doing it fasted, or this is what's happening. Just be aware, this does not happen to everyone. And it happens very specifically because of the stress response. So remember, it almost everything goes back to the stress response in terms of balancing blood sugar. So even the medications that I talked about, um, the dawn phenomenon, the too much caffeine, female hormones to a degree, but it doesn't have to, and neither does dehydration, right? So basically like five out of the seven are tied to the sympathetic nervous system and the production of glucocorticoids. And we typically just know that as cortisol. So really, really looking at this, I mean, this is so important. And that's why, again, a simple at-home lab test, the stress mood and metabolism, please understand you don't have to run it with our practice. You don't have to. But if you're you know, questioning, why am I not able to lose the weight? Why are my blood sugar levels still elevated? You want to go beyond just looking at your glucose. You want to look at cortisol. You want to look at thyroid. You want to look at estrogen and progesterone ratios. You want to look at your overall vitamin D. It's so important. And again, it's a game changer to figure out what's going on with your body. But let me get back to the high, high sauna or the cold, cold, cold plunge. If you get in and your heart's pounding and you're like, <gasps> it takes your breath away, that's a stress response, right? And so your body's done what? Well, it's just shifted inside of the autonomic nervous system, the central nervous system. It shifts from a parasympathetic, rest and relax, to a fight or flight based stage. And when that happens, your body produces adrenaline or norepinephrine and cortisol. And when that happens, your body says, oh, we don't have enough glucose for a fight or flight quick response. And no, you cannot use ketones in these specific instances. When you're in a fight or flight, you're in more of an anaerobic based environment and your body needs to use glucose. It just, it, that's the way that it works. Now, of course, there's some fatty acid breakdown. I'm not saying that, uh, but it's just more pushed towards a fight or flight response. So how do you then mitigate that? Because I love sauna. I enjoy cold plunge to a degree. And so what I would say is this, is that you work on the breath and that you stop if it is too stressful in the body, right? So what you want to do is you always want to go back to the breath. You want to be able to breathe in slowly through the nasal passages and then breathe out even slower through the mouth or the nose. So if your in-breath is shorter than your exhale, you are pushing yourself more towards the parasympathetic. I've got podcasts, but really the best place to look is inside the Iubone uh, app. So it's Iubone is A-Y-U-B-O-W-A-N. Um, you can literally download it for free. Just go to, I think it's, uh, we'll go to equa.life forward slash and You can find out all about it. Um, it. It gives you all different breath work in there. You can literally practice it. We go over, uh, we have binaural beats in there. We've got meditations. We have breath work. Uh, you'll definitely want to check that out. And it just kind of walks you through how to induce the parasympathetic so you can actually calm these cortisol levels. Whether you're drinking a cup of coffee, you're waking up with anxiety, or you're you know, in a sauna or a cold plunge, you can kind of work on that uh, box breathing and other type of breathing to help calm that central nervous system. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, again, I'd love getting your feedback, so just let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Do feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. 
Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.